Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jim, and this is my first look video at Luminar Neo version 1.0.6, which is out today. It's a free update, and it includes lots of new stuff that I'm going to cover in this video. Most notably, it's the new AI masking capability, which is super awesome. I'm going to demo that. It's also got radial masking, it's got gradient or linear masking, it's got masking controls, and it has a histogram. It's got so many things. I'm excited. These might be the features, especially AI mask. This might be the reason you bought Luminar Neo in the first place. If you have not purchased Luminar Neo, they've got a special offer. I'll put a link down below for you to check it out. A couple of quick things. Number one, I'm working with a pre-release copy, so some things may change because I'm recording this prior to announcement. Also, if you find this kind of stuff interesting, Give me a like that tells YouTube that uh, I'm doing a good job. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Only about half of you that watch my videos actually subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I'm here every week doing it. Let's get into it. We have got a image here. And by the way, it is a free update. So just go to Luminar Neo and click check for updates and it will get you to version 1.0.6. Again, a free update if you already own Luminar Neo. You can see the histogram is here. If you don't see the histogram, just click on view and show histogram. Now I wanna show you a couple of things. Number one, the histogram is right here. You can click on that to change to the various color or tonal channels. The default is the, the one that includes all of it. As you can also see, there's two little circles in the upper left and right corner. These are the clipping indicators that show the really hot or the really cold pixels. If you hit the J key, you can activate those and that will graphically represent on the image things that are completely blown out or completely black. So if I take the whites all the way and the highlights all the way, and by the way, I'll just lift exposure to make it more obvious, you can see you'll start to get red in the hot pixels. And if I take the shadows all the way down and the blacks all the way down, you can see I'll get blue in the areas that are completely cold or completely black. So keep that in mind that I'm gonna turn that off by hitting the J key. Keep that in mind that you can use that to help you basically get the light correct in your image. So I'm gonna do a couple of basic things here in Develop Raw, and I'm gonna move on to masking because I think that's the thing that you're really interested in seeing. To make this really obvious, I'm gonna use Structure AI, and I'll just go to 100 simply because it's super visible in the photo. You will notice that masking is now right here next to the adjustments. I love this. It used to be up here, we had to click on a paintbrush. Now it's super obvious. You just click on masking, and you can see you've got your options. Brush, which we've had before. Linear gradient, which allows you to draw a line and adjust accordingly. Radial gradient, which is a circle. And then AI mask. And then also you've got all these mask options down below. Linear gradient, you just click and drag, right? And then you adjust the gradient zone. So you can see it's masking based on however I'm dragging this. So maybe I'll do something about like that on this photo. And if you click back on adjustments, you can see the mask is applied across the bottom and not across the top. So the sky is unchanged the foreground has all that structure added to it. I can go back to masking. I can go back to linear gradient if I want. I can undo that if I want to. I'm gonna go ahead and just add it back to 100, go to masking, go to radial gradient, and I'll just draw this on the tree real quick. In this case, I wanna invert it because I want it on the tree and not on the area outside of the tree. Keep in mind, you can go in and combine these. So I did that radial gradient. I can now come and add a linear gradient as well. Something about like that. So I've now got both of those applied at 100. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the linear gradient is covering the foreground, the radial gradient is helping to cover the tree. So you can stack these masks. I'm gonna reset all that because the thing that we mostly are interested in, I'm sure, is over here on masking is AI mask. Now the cool thing about it is it automatically identifies nine different elements in a photo and it will list them. Let me read to you what the nine are because I will forget, but it will recognize people, skies, architecture, transportation, water, flora, mountains, natural ground, and artificial ground. Let me show you. Click on AI mask, you can see it starts to figure things out, and it's already identified these elements in the photo. It sees a sky, flora, architecture, natural ground, and man-made ground. So. If I click on sky, you will see that it's very quickly said, here's the sky. Now this is a tricky image because it's got a tree and it's got sky behind it. And I will say AI mask, it's not 100% perfect 100% of the time. Number one, 
pre-release copy. Number two, this is version 1.0 of the tool. It's only going to get better, but I will say in all my tests so far, I'm very impressed. This is a great tool and it's going to save you and me lots of time. If you like that, you can just use that or you can just click it again to unselect. If I click Flora, it's picking up the tree and some of that distant background. If I click Architecture, it finds the barn. So you can see you can click in these elements and add to what's being masked. If I click on Natural Ground, it's got nearly the entire foreground. And if I click on Man-Made Ground, it picks up a little bit more. Now here is another example of where you can stack masks. I can go into Adjustment and I've masked all those things. But if you remember, some of those things were missing. So actually, I just want to go, uh, I want to back up here, click on Brush. And once I start painting, you can see that it will show you the mask overlay and I can come in here and paint a little bit of those areas that were missing. So that's an easy way to stack masks. Now the other thing is there's actually an easier way to do that. Let me reset this tool and just show you once again I will go all the way to 100. I will go to masking. I will go to AI mask. And remember, I did everything but the sky except it missed a few pieces of the ground. Well, what I could do is click on sky and that's basically just the sky and nothing else. So I want the opposite of that, and that's where all these mask actions come into play. I can click invert, and there we go. If I show the mask, I've now basically got everything but the sky. So keep in mind, you can stack these tools. You can use them in combination, which is the same thing. And if you need to identify everything but the sky, just click on sky and then invert, and you get something like this. So super powerful, super amazing control super quick and I would say honestly really darn accurate not perfect but it's doing a great job finding all these elements in a scene which again is going to be a huge time saver for you and me while we're editing photos let me show you a couple of more examples okay so here's another example of a photo I did some basic stuff in develop raw and I straightened it once again I'll go to structure AI simply because it's super recognizable but I want to show you how it picks up and recognizes elements in a scene Structure AI to 100, go to masking. By the way, if you want to see deep dives on any of these tools, let me know. I suspect you'd like to see more about AI mask. I will be doing more on that. I'm going to go ahead and click AI mask, and it's currently showing everything. Let's say I want to recognize just the flora. I click on that, and you can see it picks up the trees and a little bit of that tree over there. And that's where I'm saying it's not finding everything 100% perfect every time. However, when I click on architecture, it fills out the rest of that tree on the left. So it's grab that, natural ground. There you go, man-made ground, which is going to be the major uh, parts of concrete in the foreground. And transport, that's another option here. It's going to pick up the cars and the bicycles. Once again, not exactly perfect. I could use the brush or I can just unselect these like I did before. And what I want to do is basically just isolate the sky. There we go. Click on sky. I can come over here to the masking controls and invert that. And I've got everything but the sky. So in this case, my structure is at 100 across all of these. I'm going to copy that mask. I'm going to commit the tool. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say structure AI negative 100. I'm going to smooth out that sky. I'm going to go into masking. I'm going to go to mask actions and I'm going to click on paste. There we go. That mask. Remember that mask was for the foreground. I'm going to click invert and there we go. Now if you look at it, I've basically taken the structure out of the sky completely. There it is before and there it is now. So 100 of structure positive in all the foreground, 100 structure negative in the sky. So you can use the copy paste invert to get things done. Let me show you one more example. Okay, here we go. Just a basic image. And again, I'm going to use Structure AI simply because it's super visible all the way to 100. Hey, I don't want it at 100. I want to go in here and use AI Mask. I'll click on that, give it a second, and it identifies various aspects of the photo. I'm going to click on Sky and I'm going to click on Water. You can see it's isolated those two really well. I think that's fantastic. Now I'm going to go to Adjustments. I had 100. I'm going to actually just go with negative 100 because I actually want to smooth those two things out. I love that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this mask. So back to Masking Actions and click on Copy. Got that copied. I'm going to commit the tool. I'm going to go get Structure AI again. This time I'm going to go positive 100, go into Masking, click on the Masking Actions, paste those, but invert it. So in just a couple of seconds, I smooth out the sky and the water. And by using the copy and invert in the mask, I added the heavy structure to the, the foreground, the trees, and of course the castle. But I'm not done. Maybe I want to do something else with the sky and the water. Maybe I want to come in here and adjust the temperature. I want to go a little bluer in the sky and water. Well, I've still got that mask copied. So I'm on a second instance of develop. Remember, raw develop, the masking doesn't apply. But on a second instance of develop, I can go into masking. I can just click on here to paste. And if I click on show, 
you can see the mask has been applied there. Now remember, I can still go back and further refine my adjustments, so I can make it even more cool if I wanted to in those areas, or warmer, whatever it is. I'm gonna go a little bit cooler, maybe something like that, maybe a little bit more vibrant. The bottom line is you understand now how you can use AI mask to quickly identify pieces of the photo, specific elements. Remember, there's nine of them that it automatically recognizes, and go in and make adjustments, lather, rinse, repeat, that sort of thing. Super powerful, super amazing, super quick. And while it's not 100% accurate all the time, it certainly gets us a lot closer and is a lot quicker than manually masking these things with a brush. So that's how it works, my friends. I'm super excited about this. I think this is very cool stuff. Thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me a comment down below about what you want to see in future videos. But I think for version one of this tool, it's working beautifully well. I love the time savings that it's offering us. And I'm just going to have fun making more videos about this. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope this has given you a nice preview of what you can expect from Luminar Neo Update version 1.0.6. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, my friends. I will see you really soon with more videos. And until then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.